Coming up, lending an ear takes on a new meaning. Boy, Kenny. Impersonating humans is all in a day's work. And that's a wrap, everybody. And a twist of fate leads to a career in dance. Lisa Brown has been profoundly deaf since she was 16. Six months ago, her life changed when she got Kenny, a trained hearing dog. Good boy. Before I had Kenny, I burned quite a great deal of food. So now, Kenny will paw me and lead me to the stove when something is ready. Lisa is an expert lip reader, but her family doesn't alert her to sounds. That's Kenny's job. Boy. There you go, Kenny. My mom sets the timer for everything that she does now. So if the timer goes off and something's in the oven, I can't tell my mom that the timer's going off and I can't run and get it. My mom has to do that with Kenny's help. So I guess it's just kind of hard not being able to react to the sounds. Like, you have to wait. You gotta pretend that it's not there. I used to be afraid to go over to a friend's house, like if my dad was working and my sister was gone, because once we were standing in the kitchen and the smoke detector went off and my mom didn't hear it. So when that happened, I was afraid to leave her at home, afraid something happened. Kenny has given Ashley back her childhood. I think she feels freer to go, where before I, I, I think she stayed home because she was afraid to leave me home alone, just in case something happened and I wasn't going to hear it. It makes me feel good for her, but guilty, because she felt she had to stay home and protect me, while she's the child. <laughs> When Lisa puts Kenny's halter on, it tells him he's going out in public. OK, ready? Let's go. I think he gets excited because he, he likes to be out. He likes to be working out, especially. It's, as soon as his orange coat goes on, he gets really excited. His tail wags. Lisa volunteers at Ashley's school library. So sorry, sweetie, you can't pet the dog. Why? Because he's a working dog. What's his job? He's a hearing ear dog. He notifies me to sound. You're lucky to have him. <laughs> up. Up. Every afternoon, Kenny gets a half hour of playtime. OK, go. <laughs> Jenny. The hardest thing about having Kenny as a working dog is not being able to pet him in the house. Like, you're not supposed to pet him or react to him in the house or anything like that. Because if you pet him when he's working, it distracts him. And then he tends to want to play. So you can't really pet him. Kenny has a half hour of off time every day. He has his own special cage. It's his cage with his blanket. He just goes in and lies down and I close the cage door and he knows when he's in the cage that he doesn't have to alert me for anything or anybody. It's just, it's his time off. It's his time to relax. Good boy, Kenny. Kenny was trained by the Lions Club in Toronto. Trainer Rhonda Workman Ooh, visits to make sure the golden retriever is keeping his skills up. Oh, Hi, Rhonda. Come on, how are you? you? Good. Okay. Doing really good. So he alerted right away? Yes, he did. Oh, good boy. Good boy, Kenny. And he led you to this door? Yes, to great. this door. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. good. I see there's no leash on Kenny. No leash on Kenny. 
fish now. Goes everywhere. Good. Yeah, really good. Good. Kenny's been trained to listen for noises. It's not that he has great hearing or a special hearing or anything like that. It's that he's alert and energetic. Uh, and, of course, his willingness to please. He's always looking to make his client happy or his handler. I think he makes Lisa very happy when he gets to the timer, when he answers the telephone, when he wakes her up reliably in the morning. And that's what we're looking for in our dogs. Now the phone test. Although Lisa's deafness prevents her from speaking on the phone, Kenny must alert her to all sounds. Good boy, Kenny. Hi. Good boy. A trip to the mall will allow Kenny to show Rhonda how well he does his job in public. Good boy, Kenny. Kenny has developed a new hearing skill at the mall. It wasn't something he was trained to do, so Lisa is anxious for Rhonda to see it. I lost Megan in the mall. She got away from me, and it just so happened that I found her, but by the time I found her, she was crying. Um, it's your biggest nightmare, really. But with, with Kenny, I know he's going to lead me to her, but when I lost her, I was completely lost, because even if she was crying, I wouldn't have heard where she was. Kenny, get Mommy! Good boy, Kenny! Before Rhonda leaves, the three of them go for a stroll. Well, I think Kenny's doing very well. You really do? I do, honest. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. He works really well to the timer, mm -hmm. even with lots of people around. Mm -hmm. He worked well to the telephone. Yes. He did very well with the door knocking. Yeah, yeah he's really good at the door knocking. I must say, I'm quite pleased. He's a big help. I'm not afraid to be home alone anymore. Good, good. <laughs> I can't imagine what my life would be without Kenny today. Um, if I had waited, I think I would probably be very afraid to be home alone, especially now that both my kids are going to school all day. I would be home all day alone, and I can't imagine, really, what it would be like without him. I love him. He's like an extension of me. I don't even, sometimes I don't even remember I have the leash in my left hand anymore. He's just, he's just always there. Daisy co-hosts the TV show Pet Project with her owner, Kevin Frank. Come on, Daisy. Her work has been nominated for a Gemini Award. She's been featured on magazine covers, and she appeared on Open Mic with Mike Bullard. Please welcome Kevin Frank and Daisy. Let's try and work up a little chemistry, Kevin, because there's always more chemistry between Daisy and I than there is between you and I. And I it just it doesn't look good to the folks at home. You know what I mean? We it's have, an icy wall. I, I I'm mean, not you sorry. know, let's face facts. We can't get Daisy without you, and that's why you're here. She's admired by other TV hosts now, uh, like Jonathan Torrens of CBC's Jonovision. Uh, I've met a lot of dogs, and uh, Daisy is one of my favorite. Mainly, m one of my favorites, mainly because. Uh, her breath is fantastic. Congratulations, Agent Scarling. Well done. Yes, I've escaped. I won't come for you. That would be rude. She and Kevin have been together for nine years. She's been an actor for three. You know, there's an old uh, showbiz saying uh, that uh, goes something like, never work with kids and animals. Uh, as it turns out, I ended up working with my dog, who's one of my kids, and it's an extreme pleasure. She's a... Uh, 
a great co-host, a good actor. She's street smart, and she's one of the best sitters in the business. <laughs> um, okay, so you're uncomfortable. Can you do that? You're uncomfortable? <laughs> Close enough. Dale Burstein okay. is Daisy's producer. Um, I think Daisy's good at her job uh, primarily because she can stay. Um, and that's a big requirement for this job. And it's not as easy as it seems. Oh, well, first of all, I, I, should, I should tell you a little bit about the audition, how we got this job in the first place. There was something very special about the moment when Kevin and Daisy came in for their audition. Daisy went into the room first, ran right in. The setup was, wasn't dissimilar to this. Two chairs, camera. She hopped up into the comfortable padded chair that was for the actor, sat down, faced the camera, and cleared her throat and uh, Kevin sat on the floor beside her. And they thought, A, what a great dog to be able to just run in and do that, and B, that the actor just came in and as if it was perfectly natural that his dog would get the more comfortable chair. Daisy acts alongside Kevin in parodies of famous films and TV shows. Brad Pitt and I discovered biting each other was the answer to all our problems. I know it sounds stupid now, but you had to be there. I think it's maybe Daisy's most romantic role. Daisy's assistant, Andrea Absolutely. Stevenson. She was beautiful. Her eyes were glistening in it. The jewelry is glistening on her. She had great close-ups. It was excellent. You and that Spaz little guy are together. But he's your owner now. Don't try to make excuses. Nothing you bark can make things right between us. She played Ingrid. Bergman, and uh, she had that same look in her eyes. Watery. I think it was all the smoke. <laughs> this week, Daisy is playing Agent Scarling in Silence of the Labs. While Kevin turns into Hannibal Lecter, Daisy heads outside for her first scene. Ready for your scene, Daisy? Ready to chin up this morning. And action. One, two, three. Oh, Daisy, sorry, honey. That's good. A little higher. Good. Take two. Daisy does the action shots first while she's full of pep. Oh my god, she weighs a ton. Her director's a fan. She is a pro. You know, we've got long days. We start at 7 o'clock in the morning and we go till 9 o'clock at night, and she's got to be on every 15 minutes. She's got to be doing something different, you know? But sometimes she gets distracted. A little break and rest helps keep her performance fresh. Uh, she knows when she's acting. Uh, she knows when the director says cut, she'll go nuts all of a sudden. And uh, uh, in general, she's, she's a good salt of the earth type of dog. When Kevin is busy, Andrea works with Daisy. In this next scene, Daisy has to run past the camera into the distance. A pocket full of milk bones helps. Good girl, good girl. Daisy's very attached to the crew. They're all one big pack to her, and she's pack bitch, in dog terminology, of course. <laughs> hey, Daisy, let's go for your W. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah, don't like. Let's go. Good. You lead. You know where we're going. OK, if Kevin's not looking, I'll give you a little bit. Don't tell anybody. All right, Daisy, back It's time for Daisy's close-up. Boston Terriers aren't very active. Daisy's strength as an actress is her mastery of the command, stay, and her love of food. It helps with her eye line. All of these expressions will help create scenes like this.
Hello, Agent Scarling. Identification, please. Costumes go a long way in helping Daisy look the part. This is a, a little uh, poncho we used in a Western. <laughs> we did X-Files spoof last year, and she played Agent Scully, and she wore this. And I'd know. Agent While Scully Daisy and, and Kevin wait for their next scene, they catch up on fan mail. Hey, Daisy, we got some mail. This one's for you. Dearest Daisy, from the first moment I saw you, I knew you were the one for me. They are the ultimate pet and pet owner. Uh, they're crazy about each other, and, and Daisy will do anything for him, and I think Kevin would do anything for her. It's been a long 10-hour day, and gone. this is Daisy's final talking? scene. Don't touch the glass. Don't go near the glass. Don't press your tail against the glass. Whatever you do, don't pick the glass. You're gonna see and hear some ugly things in there. <laughs> Nana ugly. And that's a wrap, everybody. Yeah. 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 Nice day's work. Yeah. Okay, you drive home. Let's go. Get in your carrier. Well, you are a dog, you're gonna ride in baggage. Here's looking at you, pup. Too bad. That could have been the start of a beautiful best friendship. Border Collies have been bred for centuries to herd sheep, but thousands of these dogs live hours from the nearest flock. With no white, woolly creatures to boss around, what's a smart, ambitious Border Collie to do? Aww. Aww. Dance. Aww. Good man. Duncan loves music and has from the time he was little. We do show tunes. We do things like um, our very the very first song we ever performed to was the overture from Phantom of the Opera. The first time Jan Mayer saw a dog perform freestyle, she was hooked. I didn't even know anything about freestyle. And there was a girl there who did it with a Rottweiler. She did um, that Midler's Wind Beneath My Wings. And how you could ever think a Rottweiler could be elegant, you know, but it was the most elegant moving thing I'd ever seen in my life. I said to my husband, I want to do that. <laughs> Dancing is more than a hobby for Duncan. It helped him turn his life around. Three years ago, Duncan was an obedience champion with a promising career when an accident almost killed him. They were out in the yard playing, and he threw a tennis ball for him, and he heard him scream, and he went down and he didn't get back up again. When I came home, I came home to a husband sitting on the living room floor with a paralyzed dog. And we didn't know what was wrong. Duncan had a blood clot in his spinal cord. The nerves were permanently damaged. In the very first few days, we actually considered putting him down because he was just so crippled up from what was going on. And that was very difficult. It was a long struggle <laughs> um, because we basically had to teach him how to walk again. And he really tried, and he really worked his little heart out for us when it came to doing physical therapy and, and, and the work that we had to do with him. He was real determined, and he would do anything in the world to please me. Easy. We also did some weave pole work from Agility, um, and we had the weave poles so that they were open, and he would have to um, pick his legs up and place them again. Easy. And those were the Easy. kind of things that we did to Easy. teach him he had to rediscover where that leg was. Jan started teaching Duncan freestyle dance as part of his physical therapy, since it built on obedience steps he already knew. His feet have two different names to them. This is kick. This is kick. <laughs> and this is foot. 
And then once he learned that, then I was able to just transfer him to different parts of my body. He'll do it for my knees. Duncan, kick. Uh, kick. He'll do it to my feet. Good boy. Kick. Uh-uh. Kick. Uh-uh. Kick. That's it. What? Good. Kick. Oh, you're cheating now. Duncan dances in response to a combination uh, no of Jan's voice so. and hand commands. Um, it's to my left, and it's haw for him. Duncan, haw, 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 haw. Good. Now, the, the G came a lot harder because it's going into the nerve damage leg. G. G, G, G. And if you watch him, he, he'll bunny hop, kind of. He kind of hops his back end rather than trying to do it across his feet. He's much smoother going that way. Duncan suffers through his bath in order to look his best for his performance at the Highland Games tomorrow. That's a pitiful face. If I ever saw one. A highlight of the games is Duncan and Jan's dance. Our first uh, routine today is going to be a solo by Jan Meyer of Greensburg and her dog Duncan. It's very easy to, um, to lose yourself in freestyle. And when you go on the floor, it's just you and the dog. And no matter how much crowd or judges or whatever is there, it's 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 so easy to just be you and the dog, and and it's made it's made our bond a lot tighter um, doing the freestyle. Just him and I working together makes us happy, uh, you know, and that goes for both of us because he loves doing this with me. It's probably made me realize that God might close a door, but He opens a window somewhere else, and. Um, which is what exactly happened to us.